Hello everyone, I'm Jim Kerr and welcome to Passion Highway. On this episode, we thought we would talk a little bit about internet. How do we get internet in our coach? And more importantly, how do we integrate our system so we have one Wi-Fi network incorporated in with our one control system and all of the other systems? So, so we thought we would put together this video just to kind of walk you through some of the basics of how to configure it. So when we purchased our Grand Design 397, it came with the LCI One Control System. So the One Control System is basically an, a home automation system, as it were, that allows us to control our slides, leveling system, many of the lights, all through an LCD pad that's located on, in the front of the coach as well as they have an application that you can connect to your smartphone and do uh, the same sort of things remotely. Now the challenge with this system is that it was really designed to be around, uh, set up around their own private network. Uh, they, uh, LCI built this proprietary network inside of the coach and it doesn't really play well with anything else. So we were running into problems trying to get internet to work and to have a managed a Wi-Fi network inside of our coach without having to run a separate uh, internet uh, just for the one control system. So uh, the one control basically comes with a device like this. We've pulled this out of our coach and this part is the router that comes with it and it's set up for uh, basic 192.168.1 subnet and it can't be changed you can go in and change it here but the controller for the system is 192.168.1.1 and so the result of that is that you can't change that IP address so everything in the coach, first off, has to be able to work with that subnet without causing conflicts. The second challenge is they hard-coded the system for when it's connected to Wi-Fi through an LTE card. It's, they have a device that connects a gateway to the internet. And inside of this, if you can see that here, this is the LTE card slot. So when a card is installed in this, and they'll support AT&T and, and uh, T-Mobile, it connects out through these uh, connectors that goes to an antenna up on the roof. So that all works great, uh, but it's a self-contained unit and it only supports 2.4 gigahertz and it's pretty slow. So we wanted to replace this LTE modem with something that was more robust and faster and we didn't want to have two LTE systems in our coach. We didn't want to have two antennas on the roof and all of those things that come along with that. So I started out on a journey to try to figure out how in the world I was going to get all of this stuff to hook up. So the first try, we tried this uh, Aspen which is uh, made by Wi-Fi Ranger. And this guy has a, a built-in LTE card port. And I believe it's like a CAT6 modem. So it's certainly a faster modem, uh, LTE modem. And it does work fairly well. It connects to the internet. But the downside of this thing is that these antennas are not removable, for one. So you can't connect it to an outside antenna you have to install one of their uh, connected devices. And uh, it's pretty basic. We were running into problems trying to run uh, different subnets on this device because they also hard code their subnet to only work with their devices. So when you're trying to merge their subnet and the Wi-Fi Ranger with the subnet of the LCI system, and these Wi-Fi networks, it just ended up driving us insane. So there is no way to really get it to work. So what we ended up doing is uh, we came across 
this device, and mobile must have sells it, and this is a non-sponsored link. Uh, we bought all this, all this equipment with our own money. Uh, we didn't uh, get any affiliate links or anything like that. Uh, Pepwave, which is a company that makes routers, has installed a system or has created this Max Transit uh, Category 18 Advanced Modem. So what's on the back of this guy, and it's kind of hard to see in these pictures maybe, but there, there's the modem and it has a LAN port, a WAN port, and then it has this great connector right here that allows you to um, connect it to DC power. So this is designed to be installed in trains and buses and, um, and commercial vehicles. So it runs off of 12 volt DC. So you can plug this in and wire this right into the DC bus of the camper and it will continue to run as long as it has battery power. It doesn't require AC. So that right there is uh, one of the first advantages of this. If I go to the Aspen system, they have a little connector here that's a barrel connector and it's a 12 volt, this, this device runs on 12 volt DC also, so it will cable in and power off of the coach. But the connector, it's just a barrel, it's very easy to remove. As you can see here with the um, PepWave system, it connects in permanently and very physically into this device and everything is screwed in. So when it's connected, it's connected to stay, which is a really great advantage. Um, then there's the LAN port and also the WAN port. So having these two ports really is terrific. So since the PEP wave is a commercial device, it allows us to configure uh, what they call virtual networks. So you can have different VLANs. So we can have a VLAN that's a 192.168 VLAN that'll talk to the LCI system. And we can create another VLAN for our uh, wireless access points. We could have another VLAN for our LANs. And I'll get into the configuration of this in a minute and show you how we set this up. So with that LAN configuration, it allows us to do just about anything we need and create the routing between these networks. The WAN port is another really great feature of this device. So not only does it have LTE modems that can connect up to the LTE world, it also has this WAN port so you could connect it up to like a normal cable modem at a house. And what we've done with this is we set up a ubiquity access point antenna outside on our stairs. And so what this antenna does is it will go up to five miles away and pull in Wi-Fi into our coach and it converts it so it's Wi-Fi to LAN and then it brings it in and it connects it into this port and it routes our network in just the same. So it's similar to having an outside antenna that you might see with the Wi-Fi Ranger Converge or one of their, uh, one of their other um, devices that's mounted on the roof, like these devices right here. Uh, but these devices are omnidirectional, so they have an antenna and it just kind of picks up the signal all the way around the coach, where what we're using is a directional antenna, so you can take it and pinpoint directly at an access point, so it gives you a much greater range and it's a lot cleaner. So to, to bring that into our coach, we, we bring it in, uh, Ethernet wire up into our PEP link uh, device into the WAN port, and then the WAN port then um, acts just like a cable modem or something at your house, and it converts it into Wi-Fi and also would bridge it over to the Ethernet side and then now you have Wi-Fi from the outside park, and it's a lot faster. Now the PEPLink devices also support external antennas. So you can see here there's uh, SMA LTE Antenna 1 and SMA LTE Antenna 2. 
So those two, all four of these antennas are required in order to be able to get full uh, category 18 speeds from the LTE network. But these two guys right here, the, the ones below that are called Wi-Fi antenna A and B, these have the ability to be connected either inside of the coach with just antennas and then they provide internet uh, Wi-Fi service inside but they can also be connected to antennas outside, similar to the Denali or the Everest, where uh, these are antennas up on the roof, and you have the ability to uh, connect to park Wi-Fi just the same as they do. And so that actually works pretty well, um, but what we like is using the connection to our antenna so we can get a straight line of sight to the antenna itself, uh, the, the Wi-Fi access point that we're talking to, and it'll ignore everything else. So it prevents issues from hopping from one Wi-Fi access point to another. Um, it helps with signal dropouts and things like that when uh, you use a directional antenna. But this device in itself will also connect into a park Wi-Fi system. So that alone makes it well worth the investment over uh, something like the uh, Converge, where you have to have an outside antenna that connects in, runs down, it goes into something like this Aspen, and you have the outside antenna connecting to the park, you have the end with the, uh, also with the LTE card up on your roof. Then you have an Aspen that's connected inside that although it does have an LTE, it has to be able to talk to the stations from these antennas, has no way to connect uh, to antennas outside. So um, if we had known that, we would have never bought the router with a LTE card. It was extra money and it really wasn't worth it. Um, so this here is the uh, unit that I'm talking about. This is the, um, the Aspen that we're talking about here and it's 160 to 310 dollars. So when you go in, it, it supports 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz, and it has this LTE optional. That's how the cost gets high. So when you add in a category six modem, that takes it to 310 dollars right out of the gate. And that category six modem can only connect to a cellular network from inside the coach. So even the LCI system has these removable antennas, uh, so you, it actually has an antenna on the roof. So although it's only a category four modem in here that's slower, the range is better because it has an outside antenna, so it ends up actually performing better than the Aspen at $310, and it came installed in the coach. <laughs> so um, when we looked at all these systems, that's how we ended up with this. This does all the same exact things as the uh, Aspen and the Converge outside router all in one box. So it had, and in addition to that, it has these LAN connections and the ability to do more corporate configurations. So you can add VLANs and multiple Wi-Fi access points and all kinds of crazy stuff just like you're running a corporation. So you could install this on a train and have all of the cars, every single car in the train have its own Wi-Fi access point all feeding back into this main system that connects out to LTE. Now in this it's a redundant LTE setup, the one that we purchased. So they do have some that they call a duo, which has two LTE cards, and they can both run at the exact same time, and they can mux or what they use, speed fusion, to join those cards together to help get more throughput. That, in our experience, that really doesn't work all that well anyways. You kind of just get locked to one card or the other we like to have more control over it. So this device here actually connects uh, to either card A or card B, and it'll automatically fail between the two. So it works really well in that regard. And you just install them in the card slots, and then you go into the configuration, and you just set it right up. So um, all together, let's see, this, this unit has been really terrific. We're thrilled with um, 
the unit. And you can see it comes with the option of doing a roof antenna. The one that we are going to be installing is this one right here. And so what's nice about this is it has seven in one. So it has uh, seven antenna cables coming down that connect into those ports of the Wi-Fi router. So there's four cellular, uh, what they call four by four MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. It's like having four ears. And then you have the two Wi-Fi antennas. And then it also has a GPS antenna, which is kind of cool because it'll actually keep track of where your rig is at all times. So mostly that's used in trucking and that where they're on the road, but it is kind of nice to keep track of where your RV is and you could keep that history over time of all the places that you've traveled and this will automatically update the Peplink uh, Pep website. So all right, so how in the world did we get all of this stuff set up? So let me jump over here to the admin configuration. So this is how I currently have it set up. So I have this WAN and you can see that it is connected right now and that is those WAN ports that connect to the outside antenna. So outside antenna points to the Wi-Fi access point. It converts the wireless to an ethernet cable. That ethernet cable comes in and runs into the WAN port. And then that is this priority right here, and that's how I have it set up. So on this one, I have the WAN. Okay, so then the second one, and we talked about this a little bit ago, is that the PepLink device also has the ability to connect into its own Wi-Fi access points, just like the Converge system from Wi-Fi Ranger. So when I clicked on the details, you can see it's starting to pull in these various Wi-Fi access points or uh, networks that it sees. And I can go in and I could connect or disconnect to any of these and actually um, pull that network in. And uh, the signal strength you can see is pretty good here. Even uh, though right now I have the antennas on the inside of the coach, it still picks these up pretty well. Uh, certainly a lot better than the uh, Aspen did. So the way I have it set up is I have the WAN connected up and that's the directional antenna. If for some reason that fails, it'll immediately switch over to then try the Wi-Fi connection, the Wi-Fi to WAN on five gigahertz. Uh, it also supports 2.4 gigahertz as well. So you can go five gigahertz, that's not available to 2.4 and et cetera. Uh, but I don't go that far. So the reason I have this set up is WAN first and then Wi-Fi, even though they're both connecting to the same network, the WAN could get knocked off of the stairs or the side of the camper for some reason and it'll automatically default down into the Wi-Fi connection that's direct from the PEP wave device right to the park. And then if those two fail, which they would if we were driving down the street, it'll automatically fail over to cellular. And you can see these two stay, say standby and this one says connected. So they're very fast. It's an always on standby. So all of the networks are constantly being monitored. So as soon as the WAN fails, it'll automatically try the Wi-Fi connection itself. If that were to fail, it would uh, try cellular. But if for some reason, while these are in standby, if they were to fail, it detects that, it would note it, and it wouldn't even try. So let's say that the WAN at this park went down hard. Both of these would automatically detect that they failed and it would go straight to cellular. What I like about this is that you don't have to think about it. It's connected up to the park. You're happy. Everything is good. You connect up to your truck. You're driving down the road. It automatically switches to cellular. You don't have to think anything about it. You don't have to touch it. And you always have high availability. And again, with this being connected to the DC system, 12 volt DC in the coach itself, it's high availability. It doesn't require external power. It doesn't require an inverter or a generator or any of that stuff to work. As long as you have a battery and you have solar charging your battery or whatnot, 
the system will continue to operate 24 by 7 as long as it's within an LTE range. So uh, let's get into uh, my network configuration first. Uh, just to give you an idea of how these things are set up so they'll work with the LCI system. So the LAN, this is the private network that I've set up on the um, access points and our computers. And that's, I don't really like using the 192.168 network. And I also set up VPNs into our corporate office. It's, it's difficult to route a 192.168 network. Uh, off net somewhere because those addresses are used by a lot of devices. Um, so I set up a LAN that is 10, 10, 10, 1, uh, slash 24, which was mean is 254 uh, possible IP addresses. So inside of this, you can see there's the IP address. I named it. Uh, this inner VLAN routing, what that does is it allows the 192 168 network to also talk to the 1010. You can create networks where they're isolated, so only devices on those networks would actually be able to talk to themselves, but they wouldn't be able to reach out for security purposes. But generally, you just allow that enabled. Uh, DHCP server, this has a built-in DHCP, so when, it's, when the device is connecting to this network, it uses this IP range 50 to 150 and then the least time I have it set for one day and then it automatically expires and then um, DNS just your DNS server and all of that is pretty much standard so on the LCI LAN uh, this is the tricky part of the system so if you notice up here my IP setting is 192.168.1.2 now, normally, gateways are set up as the dot one, um, you know, most of the time. So, uh, but in the LCI system, when they originally built it, their controller is 192.168.1.1. So they added this external gateway, this guy, uh, sometime after that. So in order to solve that, instead of changing the controller IP address, they set the IP address of this to 1.2. And so then they hard program the gateway, the, the, the gateway that connects to the cloud that allows remote control configuration to point to 1.2. So um, inside of this, this configuration, this LCI LAN, I'm able to tell this gateway when I'm on the 192.168.1 network, what's my IP address? That's basically what it's saying. So on the LAN, my IP address for the gateway, that PEP link router, is 10.10.10.1. When I'm on the when I am on the LCI network, this 192.168.1 network. I am dot two. And by doing that and removing this guy, it fools the LCI system into thinking the peplink router is actually the LCI router. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, when we do that and I connect this router to the LCI network, all those devices are trying to go to the internet through 1.2. They all converge in. The peplink router sees it and it'll automatically either route it out to whatever connection is active. So if it's the WAN, if it's the Wi-Fi uh, WAN, if it's cellular, whatever, it'll just send it right up to the internet, not thinking anything about it. It'll just automatically route it out. So this allows me to insert this one router into our network and then that one router then becomes our internet for the entire coach versus having two different internets and uh, two different subscriptions to LTE or forcing our network to go through the uh, LCI device that only has a Cat4 uh, LTE modem, which is really slow and it doesn't support 
Wi-Fi WAN or any of the other features that we really need to get high-speed internet in. So what happens is most people that have these coaches have to have two different networks. One's running the LCI system with its own data card in it. The other one is their um, coach Wi-Fi that they use for everything else. And then it would have its own else, uh, data network in it. So that was just too much of a hassle. So we just said, uh, let's fix this thing once and for all. So uh, to kind of walk through the settings, so the, the IP address, again, of the gateway that's going to be on the 192.168.1 network is dot .2. This guy is removed, the original LCI. So that way, this one could be dot two. If they were both on at the same time, it would cause an IP conflict. So you can only do this one or the other. Named it. This is a now VLAN one. So every time you add a new network to the to a corporate type of router, you've got to set up a VLAN, which is a virtual local area network. So the primary one was that 10.10.10 .10 network that I set up. That's the default VLAN that most everything else runs on. This one, since it's a new one, I have to set it up as a different subnet so they don't collide with one another. And so this would be VLAN 1. If I wanted to create name it VLAN 5 or VLAN 50 or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you just have to do anything but zero. Uh, again, enter, enter VLAN routing. I want to be able to go from the 1010 network to the 192.168 and back and forth. Okay, uh, let's see. DHCP is enabled. I, I use the same basic range again, 192.168.1.50 through 150. Now this is only applicable to devices that are connected to this network that are not LCI. So the LCI systems are hard-coded to their own IP addresses. So um, this comes into play if you're connecting a phone or something to the Wi-Fi network, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, they call them like MyRV. When that uh, foreign device connects to the network, it needs a DHCP server to assign an IP address. Again, this has nothing to do with LCI. It's all just the uh, its own network for uh, new devices, so to speak. Uh, the lease time, I set it up for one hour, because typically I don't have things on this network, so I want leases to expire. I want to clear that out so I'm, I don't have remnants of devices. Usually if we connect to this network for some reason, it's do testing or something, then we drop off, and after a day, I just want to clear that DHCP scope out. That's what this is all about. DNS server, same exact as we had before. So those are all default settings. So, so what's going on now is that you can see this LAN. Uh, there's no VLAN. That means it's VLAN 0, technically. So that's the default. Anytime anything hits a network, it's going to go into the 10-10-10 network space. Uh, VLAN 1 is this LCI, and it's a 192.168.1 network with 254 possible IP addresses. If I wanted to create a new one, you could just click New and go through the settings, and I could have as many of these as I wanted. So if you have voice over IP systems, if you have cameras, you want the cameras on their own private subnetwork, uh, you can go crazy with this, but in an RV, typically you don't really have to do all of that. Uh, these two pieces right here is enough to get uh, to get it working with the LCI system. Okay, so let's get into the access points. So the, the challenge that we've ran into with the LCI system is they're just not very flexible. They require that in, in order for the phone app to connect to the LCI network and the devices and control it, so to be able to like move your slides or your leveling system or something from your phone, it has to be connected to a network, a Wi-Fi network that's called My RV something. And it has to be capitalized just like this. So it's a capital M 
lowercase y, and an rv. Um, I just put dash vip. A lot of times you'll see like an underscore and a bunch of numbers. Those numbers are basically the serial number of the uh, LCI unit is usually what they do. That way they have, they're in a park and you have multiple coaches with the same uh, LCI system. Each one has its own network so they don't bump into each other. That's why they do that. But I didn't really like having all those numbers so I just called it my RV VIP. So let me click into this and I'll show you uh, some, of the, some of the stuff that I've done with this. So the key, and this is a key thing. So the name is SSID. It could really be my RV, as long as it's capitalized like that, and blank. So it could literally be that, and that would be completely fine. Or you could call it my RV Jim, or my RV 397th, or whatever you want to call it. As long as there's no other coaches around you with the same name, uh, you're not going to have a problem with it. Uh, it's always on, obviously, you want it always on. Now this is the trick. So see this VLAN setting. So you can select, I could select LAN, which again is that 10, 10, 10 network, but I have this VLAN set for the LCI LAN, that VLAN 1. And so by doing that, that allows me to connect that ethernet port on the router See if I can get over to this guy again and show you a photo. So this, this uh, LAN port right here, so I can connect this up to a uh, switch that supports VLANs, and then I transfer that over, so then what happens when I join the Wi-Fi network, and hopefully this isn't too confusing. So when you're on your phone and you join the MyRV network, it has to be on the 192.168 subnet. If it's not, the LCI system will not see it, it won't communicate with it, and the end result is you cannot move anything that moves. So you can't move your slides, you can't run your leveling system, and you can't open or close your awnings on a Wi-Fi network that's not on the 192.168 subnet. Now you can, your lights, turn them on and off, through the network, you can change your uh, air conditioning systems, you can turn those on or off, change the heat, you can turn on your uh, water heater, your electric water heater, your gas water heater. So there's a lot of functions you can do without being on the 192.168 network, but you cannot move anything that moves. So uh, in order to solve that problem for times when you're out and you want to be able to move the slides or move the put the awnings in or out or whatnot, you need to be on this network. So what we do is we join this network from our phones whenever we need to move stuff. And when we don't need to move stuff, we just stay on our own internal network. So by having this like this and setting this up for VLAN 1, when a device joins this network, it gets a 192.168.1 whatever IP address, the LCI system sees it, it sees the LCI system, it thinks it's communicating through their network, and the end of the day, it just connects up and everything works just fine, and the LCI system has no idea that this router is involved. So that's kind of how this is set up, and so it's really important. I'll just kind of step through this again, because I know it's a little complicated. So the first thing is the network. So the LAN, this is the network that everything else talks on. This, this could really be any IP address range you wanted. Um, technically you could use the 192.168.1 network. If you really wanted to keep it simple you could just use that network. We like having ours separated but you could do that and then you create the LCI network, the 192.168.1 and then the router has to be .2. Uh, that's, that's absolutely key. Then the second piece is creating a MyRV access point. So this will transmit the SSID for MyRV. And you gotta go in and name it. 
and you've got to select this VLAN of LCI LAN VLAN 1. So when those two things are set up, and you have uh, the network here, you can see I have this uh, DHCP scope IP range. So it, the first computer will get dot fifty, the second computer fifty two, fifty three, and so forth. Whenever anybody joins the MyRV Wi-Fi network, and that pretty much gets you onto the network. So why is it that then I have these other networks? I don't really like using the MyRV network for communicating, and I don't want to have a one ninety two one sixty eight network for my devices, because we VPN off of these devices, we set up a site-to-site -site VPN, and we need to be able to route between uh, Azure Cloud and our network. So trying to route a 192.168 can cause all kinds of problems. So we wanted to set up uh, different networks, and the way that we did that is we, call, we created one called RVNet. This is the main one and it's an always-on network and it connects to the VLAN, the regular LAN network. Everything else is basically the same. It just connects into that LAN network, gets an IP address automatically. We create another one that's called RVCAM. See if I can get into this guy and um, assuming that I can. Uh, that, that network does the exact same thing, except we connect our cameras up to it. And we do that so, um, so they're segmented off. Uh, wireless networks, they're constantly transmitting, and it creates collisions on the networks. Um, so it's just a packet broadcast, basically. So uh, cameras and video streaming devices and things like that are constantly sending out a lot of data on a Wi-Fi network. So to keep our traffic off of that so we don't have uh, cameras colliding with our computer and uh, you know Apple TVs and things like that, I segment these networks off. Allows us to add cameras around the coach and they don't interfere with our PCs. It also, we don't interfere with the cameras. So if we're doing a big download or copying video files or whatever to the network, it's not going to impact the camera. And then the PEPLINK device load balances all of those. So the devices on each one of the Wi-Fi networks, they can't see what's on the other Wi-Fi networks. And then the PEP, uh, PEP wave device keeps track of what's going on with all the different networks and it keeps everything working seamlessly. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we really like about this is we can just add another new SSID. So we can have, I don't know how many we can have, but we can certainly have more than we will ever need. So we could create one, um, you can create one like RV Guest and you could create a network for them you can throttle it so they might only be able to get 10 meg of download speed or something like that. You can go in and you can do all kinds of fine control with this that you just cannot do with a normal, uh, a normal router like uh, this LCI. It doesn't support that. It only supports one network and it's only 2.4 gigahertz. The Aspen will only support its network. You can name it whatever you want. I think it'll it'll create two networks. You can have one for the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, so that could be RV cam, and you could have another one for the 5 gigahertz, but you can't have multiple networks on both of the frequencies at the same time, where with the with the Wi-Fi network you can. So if I go into settings here, you can see how this is set up. So the SSID is, um, I can tell this device what I want to transmit on what frequencies. So with RVNet, I have it on 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. I do that so I can um, connect it. 5 gigahertz is the preferred. You see that here, and that's because it's faster. 
Uh, but if you start getting farther and farther away from the coach, five gigahertz drops off quicker, it doesn't have the range, then it'll automatically fail over to 2.4 gigahertz. So on the RV net, I transmit it on both frequencies. On the camera, I don't want the cameras congesting the five gigahertz network because it's a short range network to begin with. So I turn that off and it only transmits on 2.4. That allows us to mount remote cameras and cameras outside that gives them better range to get back in anyways. And 2.4 gigahertz is more than fast enough for cameras. It doesn't need a five gigahertz. In fact, a lot of cameras doesn't, don't even support five gigahertz. And then the MyRV VIP network, I have it transmitting on both. Now, what's interesting is, again, the LCI only supports 2.4 gigahertz, but I can transmit that on both. So if I want to have high speed connection and I'm within the five gigahertz range, uh, the system just works better. It, the slides and all that stuff just work better because the network has the ability to carry more bandwidth. So it's faster, basically. And so um, the LCI network actually works much, much better on 5 gigahertz, so I have it controlled. And then again, the preferred frequency, I have this set to 5. So when you have an SSID that has two different channels, frequencies, the router will say, hey, try 5 gigahertz first. So if you have an iPhone or an Android device, most modern computers, they, they all communicate on 5 gigahertz. So if you have that available, works better. Another advantage is almost nobody uses 5 gigahertz, especially in like RVs and campgrounds. So if you're on the 5 gigahertz network, you usually don't have to contend with a lot of congestion like you would on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Um, so other than that, all this stuff is pretty much the same. Let's see, is there anything else that you guys would like to see? Um, access points, right now we only have one, uh, but that's, that's something else that's nice about this. This PepWave device is actually an access point controller. So what you can do is you can actually have multiple access points connected to it, and this system will control that, transmit those SSIDs across all of those different devices, and it'll allow you, uh, you to roam. So as an example, in the front of our coach, you know, the nose up by the truck, there's a lot of steel up there. And in the campsite that we're at now, we're kind of pulled in nose forward, and the picnic table and all that stuff is in the front of the coach normally where the truck would be. Uh, we're in a space that's designed for a class A camper that pulls in, uh, but we're pulled in by a tractor. So when we want to get connectivity up in the front where the picnic table is, it can be challenging. It could drop in or out because of the steel. So what I'm going to do, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to add another access point up in the front. And it will wire into that Ethernet into this system. And then it'll allow me to remote control and get all of the SSIDs and everything just like I'm getting off of the one transmitter, but in two transmitters. So when you're out front, that one would pick up. When you walk in, you come inside, now you're closer to the one in the middle in the kitchen, and then that one would automatically hand off. So it works like a corporate office if you've been in those where you just go from floor to floor, or down an escalator, an elevator, or whatever, and your computers and your devices stay connected to the Wi-Fi network all, all the time because they all see it as the same network name. Well, this works exactly the same way. And so you can transmit multiple uh, SSIDs for multiple device uh, access points, and then your device will automatically just hop from one to the other, depending on which one is closer to it or has the best signal at the time. Well, these controllers manage all of that, so you don't have to worry about it. All you do is connect it in, wire it up through the ethernet, and you're, you're done. That's all, that's all there is to it.
So um, adding those in is very simple and easy. Let's see, anything else here that you would be interested in? Um, let's see, in the advanced section, one of the things that this supports is IPsec VPNs. So I mentioned that earlier. You can set up a site-to-site -site VPN from this device to uh, like Azure or to your corporate office or whatever, and then it'll automatically stay up and running and then it shares these VLANs across the network. And then it's just like you're in a home office at that point. Um, there's all kinds of capabilities of this system. You can create uh, QoS, which is quality of service. So if you wanna run uh, voice over IP phones or video, those sorts of things, you can set up stuff to give priority to that versus others. So there's all of these capabilities in the advanced. Uh, Speed Fusion is a Peplinks VPN service. So if you have a VPN uh, or another Peplink or installation somewhere else, you can use Speed Fusion and it will connect those two sites. It's a little easier than IPsec basically. You just connect it in and uh, the devices communicate on their proprietary protocol and it's fast and it's re redundant. And um, when the networks fail from one to the other, like from the Wi-Fi to LTE, those sorts of things, Speed Fusion is better at handling those failovers so you don't get dropouts. Like if you're a call center rep or something on the phone, you don't get a dropout. So there are advantages to Speed Fusion if you're connecting up to a network that supports that. Okay, folks, well, I think that covers all of the major systems. You can see our status is good. Um, some of our active sessions right now. So I have 15 SSL connections going. Uh, there's a lot of reporting capabilities. I have uh, real-time reports so you can, you know, not doing too much right now, but you can see what's going on in real time on our network. This is really great for troubleshooting. Let's see, hourly, see if I had anything. So you can see we're hitting two meg. We got up here to 2.2. Um, you can kind of get an idea of what you're using as far as bandwidth uh, is concerned. Let's see, maybe one more thing I'll talk about uh, before we stop. Let me get into, see if I can find this here, um, the cellular connection. Let me show you this. So, um, like I mentioned, there's two, two card slots. Let me skip over here to this guy. So there's two card slots that go into the uh, PEP link device. Top one is A and the bottom one is B. So right now I, I have cards in both. I have a AT&T card in slot A and I have a T-Mobile card in slot B. A T-Mobile network is a little iffy, so I generally don't use it. I have it just mostly as a true backup. So what this is showing is my, um, you know, my card information and that sort of thing that I'm on LTE, what bands I'm currently communicating on, my IP addresses and all of that stuff. So it's very useful to have this. And these things change all the time as you're connecting and reconnecting into the network and it keeps things going. So um, the WAN connection is called cellular. Uh, the network mode is automatic, but you could program it to just AT&T or whatnot. And you can do this for both SIM cards. So um, you can set up SIM A, and I could change this to both. And if that is set to both, then what will happen is when it's load balancing, it's also going to load balance between the two LTE cards. So if the WAN goes down for some reason, it'll try SIM card A. If A is down, it'll go to SIM card B. And it'll kind of, um, you know, go to A first and then to B and then back to A. So if uh, A wasn't working and B was, when A comes back on, it'll go back to A. That's kind of what both SIMs means. And then alternate 
uh, or alternate is um, A only and B only. So what it'll do is it'll just run on A for a while, then it'll switch and it'll run on B for a while, and it'll just kind of go back and forth between the two. Um, so if you have like data caps or something on your SIM cards and you want to kind of load balance those across them, that's basically what this does. You can see this is extremely advanced. And you can, you can set up stuff like your APN. So this is a broadband. That's typically what AT&T calls their network. Uh, this AT H2G2, this is actually a Google Fi uh, T-Mobile card. So their APN has to be H2G2. So I'm able to customize that to uh, get it to work with the Google Fi uh, SIM card. And then you can set up signal strengths that are acceptable to you. So if it's like all the way down here with only one bar on one and five bars on the other, depending on where you set this, it'll decide whether it'll bring that other card into, into being used or not. Uh, the MTU, you usually don't change that. And then the smart check, you have this stuff enabled. And so what this smart check does is it uh, constantly it brings the cards up and if I had both of these enabled, it'd bring both of them up. And it's constantly checking both of them. And when, uh, if one of them were to go offline, it knows it right away. So it uh, checks it every 10 seconds. If it fails for five seconds, then it takes it out. And then it'll keep trying the health check every three seconds or whatever you set it to. And when that card comes back online, then it brings it back into the loop. So if you don't want to hit your uh, LTE cards that hard, you can change these down to make it a little bit less aggressive. Uh, but we have an unlimited AT&T, so we're able to just keep that thing going, and it's constantly monitoring that network, sending out packets, and making sure the LTE is up. So when uh, it does the failover, it knows LTE works, and it's like instantly switches right over to it. Because as far as AT&T is concerned, that network is up and running. It's just using minimal traffic. And then you just divert all your traffic over to it. Now it's using a lot of traffic. Um, it's completely transparent to AT&T or Verizon, uh, which is another key point is this device also supports Verizon. Unfortunately, we don't have an unlimited Verizon account. Um, hoping to get one of those one day. And so what we would probably do is have AT&T and Verizon, and uh, that would give us the most coverage across the country is uh, generally what we'll ultimately what we'll do. But right now we have AT&T and T-Mobile because we have unlimited uh, usage on both of those. All right, folks. Well, I think that is it. I hope this makes sense. I know it can be a little confusing sometimes to go through all this network stuff. The easiest thing to do is if you have questions, post them in the comments below in this video. I'll do my best to get right on those comments and respond to you. I might even create a blog post about this with some screenshots. If you think you would like a blog post, post those in the comments as well and I'll write something up. Uh, this is our, our main website, passionhighway.com. We've been working hard on putting this together, and we just created our own merch store. So now uh, we have our own merchandise, our Passion Highway merchandise. So we've got some uh, products here, and we're continuing growing them. Uh, we have some cool t-shirt designs, uh, like we have this uh, skull, and we have another one like a motorcycle V-twin. Uh, so these are really cool shirts. They're different than most. Uh, these coffee mugs are just fantastic. Uh, they're really terrific and they look awesome. So if you see any merch out there, buy it. It really helps us out. We have an Amazon store as well, which is uh, nice. We Everything that we cover in our videos and in our coaches, most of the stuff is here. Now, these are affiliate links, so we will make a little bit of money if you, you buy something off of here. But this is an extensive array of uh, items, and we cover a lot of things. So we have, let's see here, I have a travel technology 
section as an example that we were just reviewing. So this is uh, one of the uh, switches, Ethernet switches that we use. Uh, so these are designed for like factories and you can see this little device here. This is um, a connector that allows DC. So the switch actually runs off of DC and it, it has two DC 12 volt inputs. So it's high availability switch and it's in this small form factor. So this is how we're able to go from that one port in the ethernet switch or in the uh, PEP link over to this ethernet switch and then we can break that out to multiple. Uh, this here is uh, Wi-Fi access points. This is what I mentioned. This little device will connect. Uh, it's an access point. You can put it anywhere in the coach. Wire the Ethernet back to the switch, and then you have um, you have another Wi-Fi access point in your coach. So these are uh, just some of the travel technology things that we use that kind of tie back into this video. But there's a whole lot of other stuff on there if you're interested in uh, checking it out. Uh, please subscribe. It really helps us. It lets me know that you like this kind of content. I'll keep putting it out there. If there's things that you specifically would like to hear about, let me know. Uh, we've done a lot with this coach from ring alarm system installs, wireless networks, uh, pretty much everything that we can think of we're, we're incorporating into this. So if there's anything that you would like to see, find out more information on, write it in the comment. Uh, click like if you like this video and subscribe and click that bell icon to to get notifications when we publish more videos. So until next time folks, I'm Jim Kerr. Thanks for visiting Passion Highway.